Hi, I'm Willow Grace Mystic, and I want to thank you for your likes. And to see more, you can always hit the subscribe button. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and uh, willowgracemystic.com if you would like to sign up for my newsletter. So I'm going to be offering an astrology basic class coming up, and it's for those that are interested in learning about the basics of what makes up you. So let's look at the second half of June 2021 and the energy that's coming up. So on Monday, June 14th, Saturn. Remember that Saturn is the planet of structure, it's discipline, it's going to square off with Uranus. Now, Uranus is the planet of shock, surprise, innovation. This is the second in a series of three for this transit. Now, Saturn follows the old traditional ways and Uranus wants to find new and more creative ways to do things. Currently, Uranus is also in the sign of Taurus, and Taurus represents what we value, cash, property. So I believe at this time that things are going to come to a head, the square, and with how we store, collect our data, our money, and I believe we're going to see more data breaches. And this is going to be where we need to renew, because we're in Mercury retrograde, and update things that we value, and how do we keep these things safe? Uranus wants to be free and liberated. So think about no rules. And at this time, cryptocurrencies, everything is unregulated. So this square is going to show us where we are working from and how we need to evolve in order to improve things to move forward. Now, Uranus is very unpredictable. It's innovative. So at this time, we may see a more creative Uranus through cyber attacks. Um, with Mercury still in its retrograde motion, this is going to reveal or show us areas that we need to adjust or readjust to go back and we need to find the gaps in the security and fix them. Now, Remember that squares squares are meant to make us feel so uncomfortable that we have to go back and we have to change in order to evolve. We've become lax in a way that we've been doing things. So this retrograde is going to offer us an opportunity to go back and review the procedures and the material so that things can be shored up where there's areas of lack, and that would be lack of security. So since this is the second square, this is not going to come as a surprise. We're going to be feeling the tension, feeling the friction as the energy begins to escalate. Soon, we're going to witness this energy at its peak on Monday, June 14th. So the good news about this culmination is that the events that they're going to gather the attention of everyone that's required to have them work together to fix the problem. The square aspect is likely going to finally force a regulation in an effort to facilitate the risk management of everyone who's involved, investors, shareholders, and us. Next, on Sunday, June 20th, 2021, Jupiter, the planet that sees the big picture, that, that it's expansive and it's the gift and it's the, the positive to the universe, it's going to station retrograde in the intuitive and sensitive sign of Pisces. Now, when Jupiter changes directions, this is about our belief system. It's going to be up for some form of review. Most of our beliefs, they're borrowed from other people. It starts with our parents, our family, our school, growing up, then work, and friends. So all of this makes up who we are. Now, when Jupiter stations retrograde, this is giving us an opportunity for us to look back on these beliefs that we have learned and decide, is this really what defines us into who we are now? Now, it's going to it's going to be a time of feeling at odds with our current belief system. And some of us may lose faith in the people, places, or institutions in which we have gathered this information. So our natural state is to surround ourselves with others that are like-minded, that share the same thoughts and belief system that we do. So when we lose faith, we know that something is off. We know that there's something about our faith or our ideas and our beliefs that needs to be revised and changed. 
Jupiter retrograde is the best and excellent opportunity for us to take a good look at the people, places, ideas of where we're gathering this and to give us an opportunity to get real. We need to scrutinize our belief system. Have we outgrown this? Are we ready for the change? Are we ready to shift our thoughts? Next is Monday, June 21st, 2021. Happy birthday to all Cancerians out there. So on June 21st, the sun that represents our drive, our inner purpose, um, it's going to enter the emotional, spiritual, psychic, loving sign of cancer. This is also going to be a time of celebration in the Northern Hemisphere, known as the summer solstice, and in the so Southern Hemisphere, the winter solstice. Now this, this point, this is a very important turning point because it's an area of culmination. It's a beginning and an ending. It's a shifting of seasons. So we're either gonna have the longest day or the longest night of the year. With um, this is when each of us will have a crossroad. Do we continue on the same path or do we choose to start a new course? This choice is going to be yours. You're going to be using all the information that you've gained up to this point to decide where do I go from here? Next, on Tuesday, June 22nd, 2021, Mercury, the planet of technology and the mind, finally stations direct. Hallelujah. It is in the sign of uh, the very the communicative sign of Gemini, where it wants to be. And so this time is going to help bring back our mental focus, our clarity, and our sense of direction. It'll take everything that we have been doing where we have had all these mock-ups or uh, technology glitches and we've worked through them. And now we're gonna spend the next week or two untangling, unraveling, and correcting to move forward in a forward motion to move us further along better. Then on Thursday, June 24th, we're gonna have a full moon in the serious sign of Capricorn. Now, full moons are always about completion, endings, uh, culmination, they also reveal. Full moons illuminate things that are normally hidden in the dark. Um, this full moon is going to have a little bit of a different vibe to it. We're going to wonder if it's really a complete full moon in the sign of Capricorn. Now, normally a full moon in Capricorn is very serious. This full moon is going to represent success. It's about tackling obstacles that we faced along the way. This one is a little bit more optimistic than usual. It's probably going to be one of the most productive and constructive full moons that we have of the year. This one is going to shine a light on achievement as the culmination of our karmic responsibilities that are brought into the light of the full moon. Um, this Cancer Capricorn axis, it's about integrating the polarity of material responsibilities with emotional needs and care. So I will go into each one of those signs at the end of this post. Next, on Friday, June 25th, um, the psychic and creative sign of Neptune, it's going to go retrograde in the mystical sign of Pisces. Now, what this means is when a planet changes directions and stations retrograde, we notice an, an intensification of the themes that are connected to that planet. So when Neptune goes retrograde, think of um, dreams, fantasies, old memories, uh, longings, retrograde, they resurface. And it's saying, I need you to deal with these things. So these are things that we have from our past that we put up on a shelf, and now they're going to reappear. Um, we're gonna have a problem with some answers, but the answers will not be straightforward. It'll be like in a Neptune way. And remember, Neptune is dreamlike, mystical. So dealing with Neptune, it's gonna require us to pay very close attention to dreams, possible imp impromptu um, meetings, or like connections or unexpected ideas that just come to us. It's about the idea coming to you, but it will not be straightforward. It'll be through intuition. It'll be through a mystical way of 
manifesting its way to you. Then on June 27th, Venus. Venus, the planet of love and things that we value, earthy, sensual. It enters the loyal, regal sign of Leo. Now, this is going to be a very beautiful, romantic time, probably the most exciting aspect of the year. So embrace this opportunity with the one that you love. This is going to be Venus, what we love, who we love, how we love, sensual, emotional, with fire passion of Leo. So sending out love for all of you on that one. So now let's talk about this full moon through the signs. So Aries. Aries, this full moon is going to be illuminating your 10th house and the sun is going to be in your fourth house. So what this means is um, the moon is going to reveal things. We currently have Pluto and um, in retrograde motion. So Pluto is transformative. So the moon in your 10th house is your career, your ambitions, your public life, your, your recognition, your life goals, where you're going. Some things are going to be illuminated. Then we have the sun in your fourth house. This is your house of home, family, mother, roots, your foundation. How are you finding a balance between these two things? This is things coming to a culmination, moving forward, positive energy, but a transformation of what are you working on? What is, um, this is not focusing on the things that have collapsed, the things that have gone away. And now you have to focus on the new, what's been transformed, what is being built, the future. Uh, you have to not look back at the delays and stay focused on where you're going. So the moon illuminating some things with your career, higher aspirations, and the sun saying, I can do it with the support of home, family, foundation, beautiful energy. You've got this. Taurus. Taurus, the moon is going to be in your ninth house. And the ninth house represents travel, higher education, foreign people, foreign things, different religions. And um, the sun is in your third house. Now, the third house is your communication with siblings, close to home, short trips, um, uh, neighbors. So you, we, we we're focusing on, it's going to be illuminating some things with your um, foreign people, foreign things, you studying, do I study? How do I study? How do I communicate with these people? Do I do it through the internet? Do I do it through, um, uh, am I diving deep into a different religion? Am I diving into something new? And it's being illuminated by the moon. Now, Pluto is currently retrograde and Pluto brings up and transforms. It says, this is an area that you need to focus on. So you are going to be diving deep into something here, but it's going to be a transformation of, it's going to be revealing something that you, you want to work on, you need to work on, and you need to find a balance with, how do I do this at home? How do I do this with communication? How do I do this with, um, how do I balance the two of these things? How do I make this happen? Positive energy coming your way because this is going to be transformative, something that you're going to dive into and learn from. Okay, so Gemini. Gemini, this full moon is illuminating your eighth house, revealing some things, a culmination, an ending of something in your eighth house. And eighth house represents birth, death, rebirth, birth. Like think transformation. It's about renewal. Um, it's sex, joint finances, it is legacies, wills. And so Pluto is currently retrograde in this house. So something is going to be transformed. The sun is in your second house. And the second house is about your values, your, your feelings, your material worth, your cash, your property, your possessions. So where are you finding a balance between these two things? The moon is about not, so this full moon is don't focus on what is collapsing or ending because this is a culmination. These uh, full moons are endings. Um, this is about focusing on um, what is being built because of this. This is your future. This is don't look back. Um, 
because delays will will stop our focus to move forward. This is you looking forward to how do I do this? What is illuminated? And how can I repurpose this? Re like transform it because it's boundaries and it's money and values and it's finances. So find that balance between personal and your joint, whatever you have together with other people. And this other people can be work, not just significant others. This could be business related. Next, next is cancer. Cancer, this is happening in your seventh house. And this full moon is going to be illuminating, revealing endings with partnerships, one-on-one. -on -one. It could be with uh, people that we work with, uh, alliances, marriage, uh, open enemies, and the sun is illuminating the first house of you. So this is how you present yourself into the world. This is how you, um, how others see you. So this full moon, remember that we have Pluto also in retrograde here. So Pluto is saying, you need to transform something. You need to either set boundaries or something needs to end. This is, um, Pluto brings up things from our past and says, hey, we need to illuminate this. Um, we need to bring light to it and not focus on what is collapsing, but focus on what is new, what is being built, what is our future, what is going to be moving forward. And how do you balance that with who you are authentically, who others see you and who you present to the world and endings, but beginnings. Next, next is Leo. Leo, this is happening in your sixth house. So the sixth house for you is the full moon is going to be illuminating your daily work, your health, your routines, your service to others, it's discipline, it's habits, and it's did you, are you finding a balance with your 12th house? Your 12th house is your, um, it's, it's, it's going within and it is secrets and um, psychological wounds and it's where we've been withdrawn. So the sun is illuminating those things with you and, and Pluto being with the moon here, Pluto wants you to transform. Pluto wants to bring up the past so you can illuminate it and move it along, remove yourself from it. And so you can transform from it. This, this energy is saying, look, you have to take really good care of your mind, body, spirit, emotional, physical, spiritual, and you've been under some uh, stress of um, the 12th house. It's a difficult house and that's what's being illuminated for you. So it's our self-sabotage. It's our, it's also our hidden supports. So you're going to find out who's really in your corner. And so how do you balance and create patterns for you that will support your mental, physical, and spiritual growth. Um, this is a opportunity to focus on there's endings and what are you going to create for these beginnings? It'll move you along mentally, physically, and spiritually. Virgo. Virgo, this is happening in your fifth house. So the new moon is in your, uh, I'm sorry, it's not a new moon, sorry. So this full moon is happening in your fifth house. The fifth house is romance, creativity, uh, kids, um, uh, birthing things. And it's not necessarily kids, but you know, like what are you creating? Creating, um, flirting, and it's so... Pluto is retrograde there. So this is you giving thought to, hey, these things are being illuminated. I need to transform the way I've been having fun. It is opposite of um, your 11th house. Now, the sun is illuminating your 11th house, and that is your friends, your social circles, your groups, your, um, your spiritual um, aspirations. And so where are you finding the balance of you need to create more fun for you. Create positive. Create where can you have creativity? Where can you have romance? 
this is, uh, the moon is going to be illuminating some things for you because this house needs to be transformed for you. Make the time for fun. Make the time to transform and bring in those those things that are being illuminated in your 11th house of fun and groups and um, social circles that I'm in and create something from it. Move, move forward with this positive because it's not about focusing on what collapsed um, because what collapsed, it's in the past. We can't do anything with it. This is what is now being built. So what new romance for you is being built? What new creativity? What new, what are you creating? Um, could be with a person. This could, this is the house of love affairs and flirting. So finding somebody new. So sending you love to get, uh, to enjoy that and embrace that for all that it is. Next is Libra. Libra, this is happening in your fourth house. Um, so the full moon is going to illuminate. So the fourth house is your home, your family, your mother, your foundation. It's our roots and it's illuminating what needs to be transformed. Remember, Pluto is in retrograde here. So the moon is illuminating. It's showing us, it's revealing, it's culminations, it's ending. And Pluto says, hey, I want to bring up the past because I want to illuminate with the moon where you need to move forward. There's some things that have ended. This could be you moving. This could be a collapsing of the old. And you need to focus on the new, rebuilding for the future. The sun is illuminating your your 10th house of career. And so where are you finding the balance of, are you moving for your new career? Um, remember that the sun is, so the sun in your uh, 10th house is career, ambitions, your life goals, your uh, recognition. So the sun is illuminating these things for you. And where are you finding the balance? Are you having to move for this? Are you having to, um, this is transforming or bringing up Things that need to be um, things that need to transform in order for you to move forward with these new opportunities that your career or your life goals are going to present themselves for you. Find the balance. You've got this. Next is Scorpio. Scorpio, this uh, full moon is illuminating in your third house. So full moons illuminate, bring light to, and we have Pluto in retrograde. So this is bringing up things from the past, illuminating so that things can be transformed. And for you, this is your third house of communication. This is siblings. This is things close to home. And this is you because the sun is illuminating your ninth house, things that you want to study from far abroad, people that you want to connect with, foreign people, foreign things, religion. So how are you finding the balance to communicate? Remember that the full moon is illuminating these things. So are you going back and reconnecting? Are you, how do you take this full moon and say, all right, this is an ending to the way that I've been doing things. This is an ending with where I have been. This is an ending with these people that have been in my life. And now I want to, it's illuminating. This is your thoughts, your ideas, your beliefs. And so it's going to be tested. There's going to be some things come to mind that you're going to say, I didn't know this about this person, or I didn't know this about this. And how do I find the balance between these are my new beliefs? And the sun is going to illuminate it and the moon is going to illuminate, bring to light uh, these gaps or these things that you're ready for the transformation to move forward with new thoughts, focusing on the future, not focusing on what you used to believe in or the past. Sagittarius. This full moon is occurring in your second house. Now, full moons illuminate. They show us. They are endings, they're culminations. This one also has Pluto in retrograde there. So this is bringing up things from the past and illuminating them with the moon so we can transform them. So it's in your second house of your values, your feelings, your uh, personal wealth, your cash, your property, what things that you value and finding a balance because the sun is illuminating your eighth house. Now, the eighth house for you is 
uh, joint finances, uh, uh, legacies, uh, wills, things that we have finances or money together. This is like a birth, death, rebirth. So the sun is saying, look, we have to focus on these um, joint things together. These, And this could be through work, through partnership, um, or from someone passing away. And how are you going to, that's going to be illuminated. And the moon is saying, hey, we've got some gaps in here. Um, we need to shore up the balance between things that you value and things that are transforming with other people. This is shifting our focus from not paying attention to what's happened in the past with new, with what is being built. So what is going to be illuminated with joint finances, joint income, uh, money coming your way from not your own doing to balancing it with the moon will illuminate things for you in your second house of finances. And how do I move forward with this with a new set of eyes, a new focus? What is it showing me that I need to build upon for the future? It's, it's all about money, finances, things that you value and finding the balance between and illuminating there. So Capricorn. Capricorn. This new moon, I'm sorry, it's not a new moon, this full moon, this full moon is occurring in your first house. The first house is all about you, how you present yourself, how people see you. Um, it's your physical appearance. It's how you appear in the world. And Pluto is also retrograde with it. So this is bringing up how you used to look in the past, how you used to be in the past, how you are transforming yourself and it's your, the sun is focused on your house of relationships. So partnerships, this could be partnerships with business, partnership with somebody else, and one-on-one, -on -one, this could also be open alliances or enemies. So this could be who you were, and now you are with somebody new. This changes who we are when we um, align ourselves in a partnership with somebody or a, uh, a relationship partnership. So who you were going through a transformation and not focusing on the collapse of the old. So this will be a total transformation of you and focusing on what is being built, this new relationship, this new partnership, this new look for you on how you see yourself and how other people's how other people's how other people see you um don't look back look forward new opportunities uh new blessings coming your way next is aquarius now aquarius this full moon is illuminating your 12th house and we have pluto in retrograde so full moons illuminate um things that are hidden th their culminations their endings and the 12th house is about it's our self-sabotage it's our fears it's um it's secrets it's uh psychic wounds it's where we withdraw and pluto is retrograde there and it's about bringing up the past and illuminating it for healing now this um, full moon is in your 12th house, but the sun is illuminating your sixth house. So what that means is this is uh, your routines, your uh, mental, physical, spiritual health. You're going to be focused on, hey, I have these wounds and it's going to be illuminated. But the sun is saying, hey, I'm giving you the opportunity. I'm showing you brightly where and how you can improve upon these to take better care of your mental, physical, and spiritual health. Do you join a gym? Do you eat better? Do you, um, your routines, your, your physical, mental, spiritual health needs to take a, a front seat because transformation is happening. The old is about removing. This moon is going to remove this old and it's going to collapse and it's healing, bringing it to the surface. And then the focus will be on a new routine for you, a new healed you, opportunities to heal this inside part of you so that you can move forward and transform. And it's a beautiful, this is, it's difficult, but it, it's a, an opportunity for healing and growth. It's cathartic. 
All right, so Pisces, Pisces. This full moon is illuminating your 11th house. So full moons are endings, culminations, and they bring light. So the 11th house is um, social circles, groups that we belong to, spiritual um, aspirations, joint activities. So there will be uh, some things brought to light through friends that friends that we've had. Are we keeping in touch with them? Pluto is here in retrograde, meaning uh, it's going to be bringing up people, places, things from our past and illuminating them so we can move forward with them. This is uh, the sun is illuminating your fifth house. And the fifth house for you is romance, creativity, um, what am I, um, it's, it's love affairs, it's uh, flirting, it's children, it's um, what do I do for fun? And so your house of fun is being illuminated and your, your house of friends and social circles, something is being illuminated by the moon. There will be some endings there to come into touch with what is going to be new? What do what what do I no longer fit in with, or what do I need to fit in? What do I need to move towards in order for me to make a better life for myself? This is illuminating and bringing to light things that um, have collapsed. Maybe some groups, maybe some partnerships um, of alliances that are uh, that I used to do. I used to do these things with these people all the time, and now it's an ending because I'm ready to move on. This is this feels better with me spiritually. This is my future. This is not looking back and moving forward with no delays. Awesome energy. So thank you for um, following me, likes, loves. If you want to hear more, you can always hit the subscribe button. You can sign up for my newsletter at willowgracemystic.com. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.